Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 5, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so we're going to be talking about this episode. I really like this episode. I thought this episode was a massive improvement on last episode. So, Episode 5, basically how we start the episode... We have an Obsidian advert. At first you're like, huh, what's going on here? And then you clock, oh yeah, she's talking to the camera, it's an advert. And you know what it really reminded me of? It reminded me of the Caramel dream sequence back in Season 3. Could that have been the same field? I think it's the same field. Maybe that's why I'm getting that. Also, the colour correction was a little bit similar. It's a bit less yellow, but you know, it very much so reminded me of that, and I... I just thought I would mention that in this video. And so we have Catco and Obsidian. Basically what Andrea at the start of the episode explains is she wants Catco to cover this to, you know, essentially bolster her ratings for Obsidian because, you know, she owns both. And so William's still undercover. So right now we know that, you know, he has a massive vendetta against her. And we get a confrontation later in the episode with her and William, but it turns out that was him using the augmented sort of reality lenses, and so he fakes that, and at first I thought it was real, and I was like, holy shit, he's actually doing this, that was kind of mad, but you know, it's revealed to be otherwise. Then we have a lot of stuff with him and Kara, which we'll get to later in this review, so we have all of that stuff, we have Kara essentially in Catco, she's being so awkward and kind of cute at the same time, because she's trying to hide the fact that, you know, they are discussing stuff that other people shouldn't be listening on. And it just makes for a very nice scene. I really enjoyed it. It was very funny, sort of quirky, seeing Kara trying to hide. But she's kind of excited about it in a weird way. And so they are being set up to be together. Do you think that is a real thing? I was sort of getting that vibe that maybe, you know, the theories could potentially become true. I don't know. Like... I prefer William now, like, he was actually very good in this episode, I really liked him, but I still don't think they should do it, and I think it would be a bit very forced, actually, if they actually went along with it, but I get the feeling that maybe they are setting up, what is your opinions? Let me know in the comments down below. And so, we have them together, they have a lot of stuff together in the episode, because Kara is essentially trying to aid him, and at one point they break into... Andrea's office they're sort of having the same ideas they're sort of running into each other and so that made for some really good stuff in the episode whilst all that stuff was happening we had a storyline with Lena and Eve aka Hope now they were experimenting on Malefic and it works by the end of the episode so what happens is they are experimenting trying to get him to incept these different creatures we got a really nice couple of references. We got a Daxamite Scorpion, a Oceanic Devil, a Maladorian something something. I don't know, it's kind of hard to understand what she said. But obviously the reference that we all took notice of is the Daxamite reference because we haven't seen Daxamites in a quite a while. So yeah, I just thought I would mention that because that made me kind of excited. Like they actually acknowledge that Daxam still exists. Yay. Alright, moving on to the next bit, so basically what happens later in the episode with Lena and Malefic is they he is able to incept all these creatures, he's able to control them, and so he tries to break free really because, you know, Lena has promised him a false lie that he is going to be able to kill his brother, he sees a way to kill his brother now, but then Lena takes control of him, she's obviously harnessed his power of inception, that was the whole thing in the episode, and he's essentially been taken over by her, and she's able to control him now, which is obviously a big revelation. So the villain of the episode was Ripraw, who is a character from the comics, and Ripraw apparently killed William's friend, so his friend was called Russell, and it's revealed by the end of the episode, and I sort of suspected this the whole time, and I'm sure many of you guys did, it was actually him under the mask. It seems like he's been taken control of by Leviathan or something like that. However, you know, maybe it was his choice, but I don't think it was his choice. I think he's been somehow manipulated and changed. And so I wrote down on my notes, 
nearer to the start of the episode that Andrea Rojas is definitely linked to Leviathan because the prisoner tells a Rip Roar, there's all this stuff going on, Rip Roar shows up, he's sort of like this Doc Ock type character and he steals Lex's weapon, so there's all that stuff happening, but then at the end of the episode, we get the reveal that Leviathan, the Leviathan lady who keeps on showing up, is actually familiar and in contact with Andrea Rojas, so she's in a car, Andrea walks in, and then you get this big revelation oh shit, she is working with Leviathan. I thought that was a great twist towards the end of the episode, so Rip Roar must be taken care of is something along the lines of what she said. So Andrea does have criminal links. She is linked to Leviathan. And earlier in the episode, the Leviathan lady returns and she says, do what Lex Luthor failed to do, change the world. And so that's what Rip Roar tries to do, but he fails and now he has to be dealt with. So it was great to see that she returns, that Leviathan is back in the folds because it hasn't been. It creates a lot more intrigue than a few of the past episodes. So it's really, really exciting. I can't wait to see what happens with Leviathan next. And so another point in the episode, we see Brainy overtaken by that spider thing. I don't know what it was, but you know, it was from that past episode with that lady and she had this sort of, uh, it's not like a virus, it's actually like a sort of living being who had taken over her body and, you know, it was part of her. And so Brainy is overtaken by that same spider, they put him in like an interrogation chair, and he gives her an extremely sort of eccentric performance that is very kind of really over the top, sort of a little bit Shakespearean. I thought it was a decent scene at points, I was sort of like, eh, yeah, I can definitely tell Jesse's acting right here, but... You know, it was pretty good, and Kara gets mad at Brainy. That was the best bit about the scene, because she full-on, like, went for it. She totally forgot it was Brainy, and that, you know, he had been taken over. So, really great scene, especially when Kara got mad. Melissa does a great job with her emotions this episode. There's a lot of strong emotions. And so, we get to see the human form of Malefic this episode, played by Phil Lamar, who was doing the voice. He is great. Like, he is really elevated, especially this episode, the Lena stuff, because as you know, I feel like right now the Lena stuff wasn't that interesting, it felt like it was just being dragged along, and man, like, he elevated that stuff like hell. If you don't know Phil Lamar, he did some of the voices on some of the Justice League animated TV shows and various other projects along with DC, but he is best known, apart from his DC work, with Pulp Fiction, he is Marvin. Just thought I would mention that because it's one of my favourite films and, you know, it's great to see him, he's really great. And so, basically, Malefic makes Lena good and he must try to incept them. So, what I mean by making Lena good, like, more interesting, basically. Especially right now, where I think Lena is sort of in a weird spot. So the big thing that happens in the episode, the sort of big event, is that Rip Roar sets off this sort of fuse or like a charge that creates a tsunami. They say tidal wave, but the real word is tsunami, just saying guys. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that is the big event in this episode. So Supergirl defeats him, but he doesn't know who made him do it. Obviously, he knows about, you know, Leviathan, but he doesn't know anything else apart from, you know, who it is, you know, that is setting him work and, like, he's getting paid and stuff like that. So there is a decent amount of decent fights, I guess, with him. There wasn't too many fights, you know, none that really stuck out. And so Rip Roar, you know, is defeated by the end of the episode, and then we get to the bit with Leviathan at the end, which we've talked about already. So let's move on. So... Dreamer is able to stop the tsunami, and these it was a bit weird because it was bystanders, and I think it's a little bit dumb, in my opinion, that they are all just standing around oblivious, like, they can use their fucking ears, right? The lens doesn't take over everything, and it just felt like a bit weird that they were all just staring there. It just kind of didn't meld well with the sort of level of action they were going for, for, you know, the tsunami coming in, Dreamer trying to stop it, Supergirl, Martian Manhunter in the air, but then you had all these people standing around, it was like cutting between that, and I was like, eh, it's a bit anticlimactic, wasn't so sure about that, and so then we get this weird scene with Kelly crying, I gotta say, I found it a little bit funny, 
I, I don't think that was very good crying, to be honest. Because then she suddenly snaps out of it, and she's not very emotional in the scene. So, I don't know if that was just a one-off, because I really, really do like Kelly, and I think she normally does a really good job. And especially after that, she has a great scene with Alex at their apartment. So, I think that was just a one-off. I can let that slide. But anyway, so that is about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe if you're new, and turn on notifications, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.